right here in the middle between Phoenix and Tucson, Arizona, a battle was fought between Confederate and Union soldiers in 1862. It would go down as the most Western battle of the Civil War, as 10 Confederate cavalry faced off 13 Union cavalry, resulting in the eventual Confederate retreat from Arizona territory. They, what ended up happening and why there was a Confederate Arizona territory was that in 1861, shortly after the rest of the South had seceded from the Union and hostilities had kind of kicked off, New Mexico Territory had some of its members decide to secede from the Union. These members created a secession document effectively splitting New Mexico Territory in half horizontally. The southern half was the Arizona Territory. It ran from California all the way to Texas and bordered Mexico. This territory would eventually be invaded in an attempt to liberate it from the Union by the Confederacy in 1862. The Confederacy saw some success. Uh, they won a battle near Fort Craig right off the Rio Grande, and then they won the Battle of Mesilla and made that the capital of the territory. Then they advanced. 200 Confederate cavalry took Tucson. It wasn't just 200, there was a little more, but 200 is a nice round number, so I've decided to choose that as what I'm going to say it was. And then they waited. See, the Confederate plan was to eventually go all the way west and take San Diego, going all the way to the Pacific Ocean. That's a very grand plan, and it's a little bit much to ask for a small contingent of 200 cavalry, although they were being followed by about 2,000 other Confederate soldiers, and hopefully by another contingent of 1,500 to the north, although they were held up by a little battle called the Battle of Florida Pass. The overall plan thought that Confederate sympathizers in Arizona territory would eventually side with the Confederates and swell their numbers, give them supplies, and make it easy going all the way to California. Plus, California wasn't the population hub, it now is, and they didn't think that they'd meet much resistance, even in San Diego. Unfortunately, none of that happened, and the Confederacy found itself alone and isolated in this barren desert. They were running low on water, running low on supplies, and they were running low on men. They couldn't hope to reach California, let alone the border. However, they did get close. In order to effectively slow down the advancing Union Army, cavalry were sent out in groups of 10 to burn hay bales at stagecoach stations, which was the way that people kind of got around back then, especially in this desert. In fact, this led to an engagement between 10 Confederate cavalry and 200 plus Union soldiers from California at a stagecoach station about 80 airline miles from the Arizona Territory California border, which was west of Phoenix. At the time, there was nothing there. Phoenix didn't exist until after the Civil War. But it's easy for us to look at it and have a good knowledge of where things are simply by that. Now, realizing that the Union was coming, they retreated. No one was injured in that battle except for one Union soldier who was injured in the confusion. No one really knows the Confederacy even returned fire during that battle. So these 10 Confederate cavalry come back and warn the 200 cavalry in Tucson about it. So they have cavalry scouting the area, making sure that it's the hardest amount of, that the Union's gonna have the hardest time getting here and that they are alerted when they come. The Union, for their part, wanted to surprise the Confederate cavalry destroy them and don't allow them to return to Texas and take Tucson, which at the time was the capital of the Confederate Arizona Territory. Now, as the Union advanced, they sent out several groups of, of Union cavalry to sweep the Picacho Pass, which is from here all the way to those mountains, to make sure cavalry wouldn't surprise them, to make sure the Confederates wouldn't surprise them, I should say. Lieutenant James Barrett was in charge of sweeping Picacho Pass for any Confederate cavalry, or just troops in general. He was told not to engage until the rest of the Union Army reached those Confederates, and simply to keep them from getting out. He would have 11 other Union soldiers with him on horseback, along with John Jones, a resident of Tucson. As they were walking up the pass, they spotted Confederates. About 10 Confederate picket cavalry on scouting duty to watch for the Union body. 
Instead of not engaging, he swept around to the rear and decided to attack them, hoping to capture every single confederate and have a huge victory and have a lot of glory to his name, as you would want in the Civil War. This was a common practice even in the East. This was directly disobeying orders, but if successful, it would be worth it and he would be killed as a hero back in his home state of California. Unfortunately, it wouldn't turn out that way. James Barrett would line up his men in almost single file as they charged, or more like trotted, towards the Confederates. Their charge would start right over here, right where that cactus is in the way. And they would charge towards the Confederates. The Confederates would open fire. Four Union soldiers were desaddled, although they weren't necessarily injured or killed. Maybe their horses got spooked. We don't really know. We just know from reports, four Union soldiers fell off their horses. And then the Confederates fell back to about that point, right before that little crevice between the mountain ranges. And they stood their ground, firing volleys into the Union soldiers. James Barrett would continue up the charge, rallying his men to continue going after the Confederates, eventually reaching the Confederate lines and capturing three Confederates who surrendered. Unfortunately, as James Barrett was taking one Confederate and securing him on his horse, he took a shot to the neck and died. In the ensuing 90 minute long firefight, two more Union soldiers would get killed in action and three were wounded. They got away and retreated with the three Confederate prisoners and returned to the main body of the Union. Meanwhile, the seven remaining Confederate picket cavalry went to Tucson and warned the larger contingent that the Union was coming. They retreated out of Tucson and went back to Texas. The Union would recapture Tucson without a shot fired and eventually recapture all of Confederate Arizona territory, splitting the line horizontally once they were reformed into what is now the state of Arizona and New Mexico once they were granted statehood in 1912. This battle marked the high watermark of the Confederacy in the West. Let's wait for that to pass. And in some ways, the high watermark of the Confederacy in general. By mid-1862, the Confederacy would be kicked completely out of their Western advances, and the Union would be sitting on the border of Texas, with not enough men to invade, but enough men to hold back the, U the Confederacy. There were still some skirmishes. There were Confederate sympathizers here in Arizona Territory, and they would continue to fight on against the Union to very limited success, if any. These Western battles aren't really looked upon much at all in our history books. Most people don't even know that a battle happened here. And yet there was one and it marked something significant. It marked the furthest the Confederacy properly advanced. It marked their hopes and dreams of obtaining international support and recognition. And hopefully their goal to eventually crush the Union if they were only able to make it to San Diego. And yet they weren't thanks in large part to this battle. However, they were able to successfully retreat due to not being surprised by the much larger Union contingent marching through the territory. By the end of 1862, a lot of the Confederacy successes were reversed by the Union. And shortly thereafter, in only six short months, Lee would lose the Battle of Gettysburg, Vicksburg would be taken, and the Confederacy would be on a downward spiral from there. So. It isn't exactly wrong to say that this not only was the high watermark of the Confederacy in the West, but also the Confederacy in general. And that makes it all the more interesting and all the more important for history and for us as historians and people interested in it. And it's also important to honor those who died fighting here and in the West, as most people don't really realize how important these battles were. Battle of Glorietta Pass, which I'll get to eventually, was one of the most important battles of the Civil War. Without that battle going the way it did, the Confederacy might have been able to pull off an upset. Overall, it's important to remember every battle, and sometimes the small skirmishes can be important too, as this one turned out to be. The Confederacy would go on to lose the war in 1865, and the Arizona Territory government, which was in exile in Texas up until that point, would never 
return home. Their dreams of a western confederate expansion and an eventual expansion down south into Mexico would never happen. They were crushed right here at Picacho Pass. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded an actual historical video, um, but things have been busy. I'm currently moving to Tennessee and that's why I've had the opportunity to be here, which is awesome. Um, huge shout out to everyone who's supported me in all this time. And if you like what you see, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, comment your thoughts. There's more to come and I will catch you guys in the next one.